I've been showing you so far is just standalone photos and the color adjusting processes that I would take to make them better. What I want to show is an actual use for color adjustments and when they would really be needed. So for this file, you're going to use two files. I'm going to go to File and Open. In Folder 4 from Chapter 8, I'm going to start down below and select the bottom two photos. Okay, here's my cover, Regional Photoshopic. And what I want to do, kind of like the DVD case, I want to add a good photo on the cover. But here's my bad photo. Okay, I took this photo at the uh, Long Beach Aquarium. They had a little bird exhibit. And the problem was in the enclosure, there was a warming light. And that orange glow made the entire bird orange. This is supposed to be a stark white bird, like a dove. The colors are horrible. Okay, so I need to touch up this photo. I need to touch it up a lot. The colors are just bad. So I'm going to hit Command J. Then, if I have one particular color in a photo that is off, like this one, you know, yellowish orange, just looks bad. I go to my adjustments panel, second row all the way to the left, hue and saturation. Click on the target adjustment tool and then I will target the orangish yellows in the feathers and click and drag to the left. I want to desaturate that orange yellow out of the feathers. But I can still see it has kind of a light orangish tint. So to truly make sure I get rid of all the orange in these feathers, I'm going to go to the beak, click and drag to the left. This is what the bird's feathers should look like. The only problem now is that it actually pulled all the warm tones out of the beak, out of the branches, out of the legs. But at least I got some good solid white feathers. I need to put the other orange tones back into this photo. So like I just showed you on the tutorial before, adjustment layers come with their own layer masks. This worked too well. So I'm going to zoom in on the beak. I didn't want to take the color out of the beak or the eye. So I'm on a layer mask. D for default colors. X to switch to black. And I'm going to take my paintbrush. Okay, this photo has a very soft blur to it, so I'm going to drag up as a little bit, give my brush a slight blur to it, <clears throat> and I'll come in with a, uh, so a smaller brush. Now when I paint with black, I can block the adjustment layer from affecting the beak. I can block this adjustment layer from affecting this bird's eye. And I can paint all those colors back in by blocking where the adjustment layer is affecting the photo. Okay, so if I accidentally do that, I hit the letter X for white and I paint that back on. I'll just come in with a real tiny brush to get a lot of good little details in there. Put a few little white feathers back in. There we go. Hold my space bar and I'll drag this up. Come up to the legs here. Let me zoom out. And now with the brush, I'm going to paint with black. Block the adjustment layer from affecting this leg. And I'll kind of paint around this little metal band on this bird's ankle right there. Block the adjustment layer from pulling all the color out of the legs. Right there. Just keep scraping away this adjustment layer. And right here is where the legs kind of fade into the feathers. So I'll just come in with a soft edge brush, control and option and drag up, and then I can softly fade that color right back into the feathers like that. This has that more natural transition. Hit X for white and we'll take out this little color right there. <clears throat> Hold control and option and drag up. I want a soft edge brush. Painting with black on my layer mask blocks the layer mask from pulling color out of that branch. And I might as well put all the color back into the whole nest. So I'm just going to paint black and scrape away the adjustment layer from all of this nesting area here. Even this little leaf up here. 
So now I've reestablished all the color back into the nest, put the color back into the beak and the eye. I've got this beautiful white bird now. Turn off my adjustment layer. That color looked horrible. Now it looks pretty sharp. But I want to do one more adjustment to this photo, and that's the fact that this bird looks nice and bright, but the nest looks really dark and heavy. We're losing a lot of detail here. So what I'm going to do is click on the copy, the one where I hit Command J. I've got a copy. And I'm going to add a light to this room by simply going to Image Menu, Adjustments, Shadows, Highlights. I can pull this into view here. And I'm not even going to change anything. <clears throat> I'll just turn the preview on and off. Here's off where it looks really dark and heavy. Here is on with the default settings. And I've really lit up that room. I'm just going to click OK. I'm not even going to change anything. I just wanted more detail to come out in my photo. Okay, the other thing you're going to notice, you might not see it on this screen or in this demo as much as you might see it at home, is I've got these bands of green coming across here in the background. I've got a lot of green around the chest of this bird. If I zoom in, maybe you'll see that a lot more clearly right there. And those are called JPEG artifacts. Okay, what's happening here is when you have no detail, like black, there's nothing there. When you try to lighten that up, Photoshop doesn't know what's supposed to be there. So it just adds detail or it brightens up random pixels. And now it looks like the bird is radioactive and it's glowing green. There should be no green around this bird. That should be a black background. So the way I'm going to deal with that issue is pretty simple. Right above the type tool, I'm going to go to my toning tools and I'll come down to the burn tool. Your burn tool makes areas darker. What you have to be aware of is the burn tool has a range of values right up here. Okay, mid-tones would be like the gray tones if I'm on the burn tool. Um, highlights would be the bright areas of the feathers. What we want is the dark background and that's shadows. So now I'm just going to set my exposure all the way to 100. I want to really darken in this background. I can hold control and option, go with a slightly smaller brush, maybe a little harder down here. And now I'll just zoom in so you can see this happen. I'll take the burn tool and just burn around the edges of the bird. Just kind of skim the edge of the bird. Look at all that black that has come in compared to this green. So I'll just keep scraping away on this green, burning it back into black. And I'll just look for any of those areas that don't look right, that look too green. So I'm going to keep going around here and we'll go up next to the bird's chin right there go up and around the beak around the crest of the head right along the edge i don't want to burn any more of the bird he's already dark along his back so i'll just kind of skim down the back side right there just look for any more of those little green pixels i can make my brush a little smaller to kind of sneak around into these little dark nooks and crannies here paint around that leaf Okay, I'll make my brush bigger and I'll just keep scraping away all these green pixels along the background. Just keep scraping away here. Let me zoom out. See, I can see a big green streak right here. So I'm just going to take my burn tool with a bigger brush and just keep scraping all those green pixels out of there. So I'm not really scraping, I'm darkening them. I'm burning them back in because I'm using my burn tool. So all those green pixels are going back to black. And now, check that out. I got a nice, stark contrast. Beautiful white feathers, colorful values, solid black background. This is a sharp photo. This is what my human eye should see if I were out in nature. Okay, not a yellow tinted bird from a warming lamp. 
So what I want to do is add it over to this magazine. Okay, so I'm going to start on the magazine on the bottom layer. I'm going to come back to my photo of the bird and flatten out the image. Okay, the upper right corner of the layers panel is your pop-up menu. Flatten the image. And just like every other file, I can drag the photo up with my move tool, wait a second, drop it in, and the photo is way too big. So here's a trick. I'm going to hit command and minus a couple of times. And you'll notice if I am on a layer and I take my move tool and I hover over that photo, just by resting my move tool here, I can hold down the command key and it will show me a preview of the outer boundaries of that photo. Okay, you just hover over the photo, hold down your command key. That's how big that photo of the bird is. So I'm going to hit command T. I had to zoom out so I could see the outer boundaries of this photo. And I'm going to center it right there. All I want to do is keep the photo centered. So I'm going to hold my Option key and drag a corner. Option means centered. So I'm just going to keep dragging this down right about there. Now I can let go of the mouse, let go of the Option key, hit Command and Plus a couple of times to zoom back in. And I want the photo to be just large enough so it's going past the top edge but a little bit smaller so I can see a little bit more of the nest here. Go right about there. That should work for me right there. That's a beautiful cover. So I'm going to hit return. Beautiful white bird, stark contrast, allowing my letters to be easily readable. This is the professional shot that we want for this magazine cover. So I don't need this original bird anymore. I can close it, don't need to save it. The magazine cover is what I want you to hand in to me. I want you to present a biologically realistic photo of this white bird in this colorful shot. That's how I would do it, so you should do the same. <laughs> I'm the teacher, you have to. All right, I'll move on.